All right, good afternoon, guys. I apologize for the uh, video yesterday being taken down. Um, apparently, I'm not absolutely sure on how to give proper credit to the songs that I used within that video, so this time I'll just be using my own voice. Um, so, let's begin. Um, I'm just going to go over SQL injection using SQL map again. So, let's see. Oh, I got a text message. One moment. Okay. Okay, so um, basically what I've got here is uh, a distribution of Kali Linux inside of VirtualBox. Um, in case any of you were wondering, and I set that up uh, not long before the first stream. So, that's what we'll be using again here today. And this is just for me closing VirtualBox without actually closing Firefox so let's get started now what I'm using is this uh, web application that's made for testing your your penetration testing methods called DVWA or dam vulnerable web application and um, it came with a default username and password but I did change it so um, as you can see let's see here the CSRF panel actually has the ability for you to change any user's password that's registered with DVWA. So my current password is ASDF, and we can have a look at that just for proof. Just change the type to nothing, and you can see I've typed ASDF. So um, let's go ahead and change it to something else. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> change. Okay, so password changed. Now, if we go to log out, type admin again. Why, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, my brother just walked in on me, let me, gave me a couple things. So, anyway, um, type admin, and um, if we go to inspect, I can remove the password here just so that I can show you guys what the password I'm using is. So, if we type, I must have removed it from the wrong thing. One moment. Backspace enter. There we go. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Five six log in. All right, I guess it's not gonna have that. So, but I swear to you, one two three four five six. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now what we are going to do, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of resize this a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you guys have this real quick unless you read it. Um, for a second, I'm just going to hold it here. Okay. So, uh, just pause the video, I guess, if you want to read that. So, all right, we'll move on to the SQL injection portion. Now, there's two, as you can see, there's two different um, options for us here for. SQL injection testing our methods and um, one of them is blind and that actually means that we can't see certain things that allow us to do SQL injection manually and I'll have a manual SQL injection tutorial later on but for now I just wanted to kind of showcase uh, the Kali Linux tools in this kind of series so we'll go with that um, as you can see if we type in admin for user ID press submit it goes through but at the top here you can see it says admin within the search and it actually has a user token there but we'll, we'll get something like that later so um, if we type a uh, an apostrophe in search you can see it goes up there it always everything goes up here in the URL so that means um, even if it didn't there's ways to make make kind of a parameter here go up here by viewing the the parameters um, 
inside of something like Burp Suite, looking at the HTTP requests, but um, which is what we're gonna we're gonna do now in order to get the cookie. So I need the cookie in order to set up a session with SQL Map, so we can begin SQL injection. Now things things like this aren't always gonna be um, vulnerable to SQL injection. This one is is particularly just set up to be vulnerable to SQL injection for testing purposes. And actually, we need to set this to low. Just for because uh, it actually has lots of settings and uh, these different ones they just get harder. But for this for this example, we're just going to do low um, for this SQL injection. Yeah, now you can see that's what I was trying to show you. It'll uh, tell you that you have an error in the error, and then there's all these apostrophes and double quotes. So that's what that is. Anyways, so let's go ahead and continue with this. We won't update it now. Temporary project. Use burp defaults. So basically what this does is it sets up a proxy for us to route our internet through our uh, web requests, HTTP requests, and we can see kind of everything that goes into, into our requests. We can edit them as they go out or come back in. And I'll show you how that will be helpful soon. Let's go to the proxy options and we can see it's running on this IP address 127.0.0.1 and port 8080. So we'll go ahead and set that up inside of our oh I'm sorry it's in advanced inside of our Firefox yeah connection settings and I've already got it in there from yesterday I just switched it from no proxy to manual proxy press OK and now we're ready to go so if we type just four A's press submit you can see that our burp suite is having some activity now we go to the intercept tab within the proxy tab and here you'll see the actual cookie now the cookie is important because it's what identifies your login so if we can actually pass that to SQL map it'll be able to pretend like it's us logged in as this account so that I can perform SQL injection so we'll go ahead and open a leaf pad and save that in here. This entire thing is the cookie. So now we'll just open Burp Suite again. There we go. Forward. Go ahead and close out of it because we're done with it now. We we'll go to, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and change these network settings back. No proxy. All right. So now we can begin using SQL map. So you start out just by typing the name of the tool, then you do tech u for URL, and then equals, or actually you don't even need equals, you can just type space, and then add double quotes, and then you need the URL here. Just control A, control C, paste, finish the quotes. And the HTTP is already there, you wanna make sure that the HTTP is there. I've had some issues with that in the past. So now you type two tags and then the word cookie and then equals and then uh, double quotes and then you go back to your leaf pad here. We'll go ahead and copy this entire cookie and paste it in here. Press enter and let it do its work. It looks like the backend DBMS database management system is MySQL, and it is. I've seen the I've seen the, the what it's running on on my other machine here. So, do you want to skip test payloads specific for other DBMSs? And I'll just say yes because we know. For the remaining tests, do you want to include all tests for MySQL extending provided level one and risk one values? I'd say yes, just to add to the the tests. Okay, get parameter ID is vulnerable. So the, I, the, the parameter here is ID right here. This is the vulnerable one. So it'll be sticking its payloads where we typed A, all these A's. 
So, um, do you want to keep testing the others, if any? And we'll say no, because if it's vulnerable, we might as well just finish it there. So we, we press the up arrow to get the last command we entered, and we type space. Now we want to have it search for the databases, so we do two tax and then DBS. Okay, so it's already gotten the databases that are available. And the one we're after is DVWA. That's the one we're using to log in and stuff. So we'll do capital D and then we'll type two tags and then tables to get the tables from that database. I'm sorry, I must have done something wrong. Hold on. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, you need to specify the table. So what you'll do is type the the TAC D, capital D, and then a space in the name of the table. So like I said, we're going for the DVWA table. And uh, and then a space again, and then dash dash tables. And then you press enter, and that'll start listing all the tables inside the DVWA database. And you can see we have guest book and users inside of there. So we're interested in the users um, database, or table. So we'll press another up arrow, We'll type a T and we'll do users. We'll type two tags and then columns so that we can get the columns inside of there. So you can see now that, that um, inside of that table, the users table, in the DVWA database, there's these columns called user and password. And those are the ones we're probably the most interested in. So now what we'll do is we'll just select those two columns. We'll do dash C and then we'll do user and password and way up here we'll take a couple dashes and type dump. Now it should just dump all of those. Do you want to store hashes in temporary file? No, uh -uh, because we're going to use something that'll try and crack these. Those, uh, these. Okay, you can see here that it's retrieved, and I'm about to explain what I was saying, but um, you can see here the things that it's gotten. So it's gotten this, which is the username, because we specified user first. So there's a username called 1337, there's an admin, Gordon B, Pablo, Smithy, and then these right here are passwords, but they're not, they're not stored as what you type them in. So whenever you register an account online and you make your password like 12345, it'll still look like this inside of the database because they encrypt your password actually and then store it in their database. And so when you go to log in, they take your username and then they find it in their database and then they take the username and the password out and they compare it after encrypting your password and typing it in so um, no because SQL map comes with a tool that will actually try and guess these passwords so we'll, we'll just press no do you want to crack them via dictionary based tag yes and we'll just use the default dictionary that comes with SQL map Cut password suffixes no okay you can see it's cracking the passwords now it's got the first one second one third one fourth one okay it got all of them all right so now you can see we've actually exfiltrated the usernames and passwords out of this database out of the DVWA website um, database so there's a user here called 1337 and here's the user that we just changed the password to actually remember when we changed it to one two three four five six well there's the password for it and we can actually use any of these users to log into the DVWA application so let's use an example here uh, Gordon B will use his account that's his username and his password is ABC one two three so we'll go ahead and minimize this. Go here and log out. Who's Gordon B? And ABC123. And just to prove that I'm using these, I will um, go ahead and change the type here to, uh, if it'll let me. There we go. Okay. So now, close out. You can see I've typed the password as ABC123. So log in and we're logged in under Gordon B. So that is how um, 
hackers if say to say the dvwa was actually google or something someone found an sql injection in gmail.com and um, they were able to exfiltrate your usernames and passwords and all that other information that we saw in there that could be exfiltrated let's see uh, your avatar um, failed login last time that happened your first name last name last login user ID things like that um, they would be able to uh, run your run your password hashes through something like this and potentially log into your Gmail account so that's why it's important to have strong passwords that aren't commonly used unlike these these are actually very commonly used passwords that's why they were in a dictionary and a, a dictionary is basically a big long list of passwords that are commonly used so um, yeah just remember to have some secure passwords and um, if you guys have any questions then feel free to leave them in a comment or um, or send me a message uh, I'll leave some contact information in the description as far as that so uh, have a nice day turn on notifications if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff I'll be doing more videos on uh, Kali Linux tools and different things like that in the future just so that I can help inform you guys on uh, how these attacks are performed and kind of how to secure yourself from them so uh, have a nice day and I'll see you later